Dang, that's a good fish. What's it gonna weigh? 12 pounds. All right, guys, simple strategy this morning. Uh, we're doing some dragging. We've had two days of rain, uh, some cool temperatures. Water temperatures have dropped. We're down to about 84 degrees. It was up around 87, 88. So a little bit of a temperature drop. I don't think that's gonna be a big contributing factor to anything, but it is nice. It feels good out here, humidity's down. And uh, it's just gonna do some prospecting for some fish uh, as it's been this entire post-spawn period which we're fishing here in July um, it's been hit or miss it hasn't been on fire it hasn't been a rapid recovery at least where I'm fishing and the way I'm fishing maybe it's different for some of you guys but uh, it's been hit or miss so we're gonna step up to the plate take a swing see what we can catch all right you guys kind of know what's in the cooler you know when I walk to this cooler I'm pulling out that right there Got us some chicken. We uh, also got some cut bait. So it's gonna be my typical MO here. I've got the red rods, the ripping lips rods. Uh, I'm gonna put those out with the chicken. I use red because I, you know, when I used to use the strawberry jello chicken, uh, I would put that on there because it was red. It was easy to remember. Uh, but now I am. I dropped my chicken. Now, uh, I don't put the strawberry jello on it. I'm finding out, I'll have some numbers for you here shortly, but the plain chicken is producing just as many fish as the strawberry chicken, believe it or not. So, my thesis that it may be more about the chicken than it is the jello is proven true. So, let me get these cast out. I'm going to be running two pairs of planter boards. That's four for you people who are challenged by math. Cover some water. See if we can catch some fish. Get another rod here ready to go. Got some of the Bone Town drifting weights on here. It's just a sand tee rig. And uh, this is one of the spinning rods. This is one of the PC Fun reels. Put you some links down below on where you can find those. Put another piece of chicken on here. I'll show you how we do a planter board in case you haven't seen any of the videos i have got several videos on them first thing you're going to do is chunk your line into the water you don't have to cast it super far what you do is you just let it sink to the bottom sinky 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 boom it's on the bottom now once it's on the bottom what you got to do is connect the planter board these are bcat boards good boards i like them and they just have a clip on the back very simple to attach clip that keeps it on your line that keeps it attached to your line then it has a release clip up here this is one that locks down and has a bar in it i like these a lot for this type of drifting and then what you're going to do is the simple way is just to put it in the water right next to the boat what i do is i actually pitch it out away from the boat just a little bit to give it a jump start but literally all you have to do is lay it right beside the boat and then what you're going to do is let line go out and you'll let it go out as far as you want to let it go. Uh, the line will go out, it'll go out, it'll keep going. It basically looks like a bobber back there now, which is in effect what you've got until you knock it into gear. And what I mean by that is engage your reel or flip the bail on your spinning reel and boom, when you do that, it pulls it tight and it'll cut out a little bit and it'll start swimming out away from the boat which gives you the spread uh, that planer boards are designed for. All right, guys, got one going on the planer board. Hooked up, been dragging probably 20 minutes, maybe. Pulled across, we started out on a flat adjacent to the river channel and we pulled into the river channel. And that's base probably that fish probably hit on the fall. Get a little more line back here. Get this sucker off of here. Now guys, with the planter boards, you can pop those things loose and just let it slide down the line. But what I will do, 
I try to get the board off. It's just easier operation when you do that. Him up here. Decent fish. PC fine. This is what is this? This is their Viper X reel. I have to keep up with the names. I got names for them. And they're ripping lips. Super Cat spinning rod. I like their spinning rod. Lighter weight rod. I hate a big old giant heavy rod. Be honest, I wish they made. I wish more catfish rod companies made six foot six or seven foot rods for boat fishing. Fishing from a boat, not bow fishing. Boat fishing. <laughs> seven foot's all you need. Boom, good fish. Right here. Bring him over here. Got some battle scars on this one. Get off that fin, get off that fin. There we go. Come here, big boy. There we go. Pretty fish. Hook out of his mouth. Again, chicken eater. This one has a few battle scars. One has done some battle right there. Yes, sir. Old male seen some action. Hopefully he's spawning stuff's over with. Get back to eating. Get back alive. There's fish number one in the boat. Happy to get on one. Like I was saying, that fish came uh, in kind of in the river channel or right on the drop one. Uh, kind of depends where those lines were, deeper water. The flat didn't have a whole lot on it. Uh, I was uh, I covered it for a while, marked a few arches. Thought we would have hooked up on something, uh, but never got a bite through there. So I decided to drop into the river channel. I have no wind. Right now, it's, it, it's just slick as glass out here, so I'm able to drag these uh, this area pretty much any way I want to I'm dragging upstream um, some will argue that's not the best way to go but there is no current uh, we have no water moving right now in the lake so uh, so we're gonna pull on up through here and keep them kind of spread this one side that has the cut bait is kind of gonna go over toward the channel ledge where it starts coming up out of the old river channel these are gonna kind of be in the bottom so We'll see where we get hit, if we get hit, and then try to refocus our energy in that area. All you can do is cover some water, see what you catch. All right, guys, I think I got one going on the planer. Cut bait side. On that ledge I was talking about, kind of where it rolls up. Oh, he popped off. I felt it pop. Yeah, I was pulling over here closer to that ledge. I had these cut baits up on that side, and I felt it pop. He was hooked up for a second and then let it go. It'll happen, guys. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna catch every fish that hits one of your baits. I tell people that on guide trips all the time. Stuff happens. Sometimes you put too much pressure on them. Sometimes they don't have the bait. Uh, I've got one. One of these floats on here is kind of wobbly. It's on there crooked. It, it, it moves through the water and vibrates. Uh, it gets hit a lot. And <laughs> speaking of, there you go. You can see the slime. You see that bobber, how it's twisted? Odds are that sucker got hit. Uh, it can happen. It can happen. They uh, key in either on what the smell is, which this was a cut bait. Actually, this may have been a live bait. Uh, but they key in on that and got to remember down there deep water they can't see what's going on so they're going to hit what's moving what they sense sometimes it's that court it'll happen get it back out there and catch another one up 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 got one going right there well maybe he came over decided he wanted some more to eat get this rod back up secure that there i always wonder when that happens 
popped off too. That was a smaller bite than the last one. Dang, two in a row we missed. I'm running out of bait on this side of the boat. Let's see what happened on this one. We'll take a look at it. It'll happen. It looked like a smaller fish. It looked like a channel cap. Yeah, if this, yeah, a bluegill head. No damage there. We'll get this one back in the water. That one, I think that was a cut bait on that first one. Um, but I think the live bait is on this inner planter board. So it happens, guys. It happens. No need to change hooks. No need to change tackle. Just get your baits back in the water and get back to fishing. Some people have asked me if my guide trips are the same as what they see in the videos. And they're similar. They're similar. I will say this, though. On guide trips, I'm a little less patient. Uh, I typically will pick up and move a lot quicker than I will when I'm fishing alone. Um, mainly because I ain't got nothing to lose. Uh, you know, there, there are times where I may go out here and sit in a place for two, two and a half hours and just see what the heck happens. Experiment, I'm less likely to do that on a guide trip unless I'm getting bit. It, I mean, in all honesty, I'm not gonna sit in a place long if I'm not getting bit or catching fish. Uh, so it's similar, but a little different. Uh, I will, I'm patient to the point that I know there's a, a certain amount of time you have to commit to trying to find fish in a certain area or a certain spot. But, um, you know, there's there's also a limit. Yeah, uh, you, you gotta, you know, I can stay out here two hours, I can stay out here 10 hours. Sky trip, you know, there, there's a certain amount of time you've got allocated for that. They got stuff to do, places to go things to do so um so yeah i try to uh i try to try to be patient but i'm not real patient on guide trips so guys i think we may have a small fish on this planter board i have not seen a butt kick an aggressive bite yet today I'm nursing this one in, hoping he's still on there. Like I said, I have not, to be honest with you, past few guy trips, we have not had really a smoking killer. I think we had one. We had one that was just crushed a rod. But, I don't know. We caught a few fish with some mud on them which I was telling people on the guide trip, that can happen any time of the year. That is not just a winter thing. Why it happens in the summer, I don't know. I don't know why they do it to begin with. Typically, we'll saw you, he's a little one. He's precious. Uh, <laughs> oh, popped him off right there to the boat. Little bitty blue. He's lasso hooked on chicken. That's another one of them wobbly corks I was telling you about. Might be onto something, fellers. That was a little bitty blue. That was about a pound and a half. So, got one, but man, they ain't killing it. They ain't crushing it. All right, guys, got a decent pull on one of the planer boards. This one, kind of up on the flat. He hit it, and it looks like he's running towards some deeper water. We're going to see. See if I can keep him out of this other planer. That, my friends, will be the challenge. Oh, planer board management. It's the only downside when they hit the outside one. You have to do a little bit of finagling. If you can get the fish to stay down, that helps. That helps. If he stays down, he'll stay below those other lines. So if you get this board off of here, that will make the management of this a little bit easier. Here we get hit. That wasn't a bad bite. I think this is probably closer to the first fish in size. Not a monster, but I'd be happy to have it. Try to do some finagling here without getting into my bait rod. But this smaller, decent fish. Oh, yes. 
shook. There we go. This one. Oh, he stinks too. Doesn't, he got some smell to him. Look at this here. A little smaller than the first one, but a blue. Nice blue. Keep him back alive. All right, guys, fish number three. I'm going to quit complaining. That's a good, that's a nice to get hooked up again. Uh, that one came on cut bait. And we got, what, two on chicken. I uh, had a couple bites on the cut baits, no hookups. And I uh, finally got that one. It's up on the ledge, probably up on the flat or at least the top of it. A little few battle scars, no real damage. Uh, just don't know where that 10, 12, 13 pound fish are that I'm looking for. Because uh, usually if I can find those, I can find some bigger fish. I'm going to keep pulling this for probably another half mile. And we're going to make some adjustments. No. No, 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 no. Not a catfish. Not a little bitty fin me catfish. Get off of there. Get off of there. Ah. That's a fin job. Folks, that right there is a mayfly hatch. Uh, pretty big one. We get those here on the Catawba Channel Lakes. Uh, as I am sure some of y'all get them in other parts of the country. Uh, mayflies are not unique to our area. Um, the odd thing is we're getting more hatches later in the year this year, which is kind of different for us, but it is what it is. The bad thing about that is, is generally the fishing goes to crap when that happens. Uh, I think little fish feed on that, big fish feed on those fish, and uh, it can make for some bad fishing. I generally try to avoid it when I see that on the water. Uh, I try to stay away from it. Uh, usually when I get to the boat ramp in the morning, you'll see them buzzing around the lights and stuff if you're there right at daylight. I was not there super duper early this morning. Uh, but yeah, it's going on here and it comes in different places on the lake. You know, it'll be in different areas. You'll, you'll have one area, it'll have a big mass hatch. You'll have another area, but the bottom line is I generally don't like the fishing when I see that it can make it tougher. It can make it tougher. So, uh, I am making a drag that last fish that, uh, we caught, um, there, that blue, was the only one I caught him. I went a little bit further up through there and uh, didn't put anything else in the boat. So I made a run up the river. It's a little bit muddy from some of the rain we had a couple of days ago. There's some stuff washing in from some creek. So typically I don't like drifting and dragging in this stuff, but I'm doing it. I'm actually marking a lot of fish. That's the frustrating part is there's actually some decent arches in through here. So, uh, it is what it is. There's no water being released right now. There's no currents, but I'm going to keep pulling through here. I'm going to try it for a little while and then I'm going to move. There's one thing that you're able to do in a boat. You can pick up and move, pick up and make a run, go somewhere. You can't do that bank fishing. You guys, if you know, you're fishing off the bank here, you're going to get what you get. So the one thing uh, you have there going for you is if you live in a house, well, you can go put the rods out and watch them get hit. If you and they're sitting there, he just finds you a place in the shade, pop your tent up and try to beat the heat while I have, wait for it to happen. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna keep this little pull through here and then we're moving. I think that's, yep, got a fish. I got a feeling there's a wad, a very small catfish right through here. Bada bing, there's one. There's one. While it's the right species, definitely not the size fish we want to be catching. This is actually on one of my perch rigs. New reel, PC Fun reel. It's one of their new ones out. I think it's called an Alloy X. Nice little reel. Putting it through the paces. I was hoping to put it through the paces on some perch. So far it's catfish. I really hope this one stays buttoned up. This is a good fish. That is a good fish. 
that is the kind of bike you want to see. It's a nice slow rollover. Digging that. Not sure if it's around this other line or not. Such a waypoint. Oh, is he in some other lines? Hope not. Uh, maybe. I don't know how he got in those lines. This could be a mess. Get this rod out of the way. So we're not dealing with it. In the mess. There we go. I have a feeling we're going to need a net. Nice to get hooked up. This is a chicken bait, by the way, guys. I see him on sonar. Looks sizable. This is on the PC found reel, spinning reel, and first good one on this Super Cat ripping lips rod. Work him up here nice and slow. With all the bad luck I've had today losing fish. I don't want any more. It's a color. I see a lot of color. He is in another line. It's a good fish. Ooh, yeah, get him in there. Get him in there. That right there, guys, was worth all the frustration. Good fish. There he is, guys. Good looking fish. Big belly. Good looking fish. Nice fish. That is a stud right there. Good fish, gonna get it back alive. Man, that was a nice fish. That's the kind of bite I've been looking for. Um, just that good roll over, fold over, and start pulling some line off. That uh, was nice. Came on chicken too, surprisingly. Uh, I say surprisingly. Surprising for a lot of people, probably not for me. Uh, we've caught a lot of bigger fish on that stuff. Uh, right in the middle of a river channel, about 35 feet of water. Uh, a few arches around. Looks like a lot of very small catfish down there. Uh, no thermocline. That's the other interesting thing through here. I think they've been moving enough water through here that it's got stuff churned up. So. Uh, it took a while, made up for all the frustration earlier of uh, losing those fish, uh, those short strikes. Of course, they were small fish. Uh, big difference between a little fish trying to get a bait in its mouth and a big fish like this that just engulfs it. So, man, I can go home happy with that one. All right, guys, got one going on the plane there. Hit it good. Didn't kill it, but I'll take it. We've actually been dragging down this channel was starting to come up out of the river channel where I caught that big fish. And getting up here into the edge of the channel, channel edge. There's also a little creek that dumps in right here. So we're gonna work this area right through here see if there's anything in there. I actually put one of these baits suspended. I've seen some stuff three or four feet off the bottom, a little bit higher than what I would normally hit with dragon baits. Never got hit. I have to work on that game. A little kayak catfishing style. That's the way he fishes a lot of stuff he fishes. Suspended. And it will produce certain times of the year. I don't do it. Uh, it's not that you can't catch fish that way, because you can. Uh, man, he come up to the water cruising like a shark. It's just it's a habit I've never gotten into. And a lot of stuff that we do as anglers is habit and uh it's just not a habit i got into Get some stuff rearranged here 
boom, got another one going. Got that planter board going. That's two. See, liftable. Oh, he's a little too big to lift. A little too big. Ah. Semi, 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 semi. Try not to tear that hook out of his mouth. Boom, that's a good fish. That's a pretty one. Nice, nice. See if that other one's hooked up. Maybe the combo right here, guys. Right on this edge for some reason. Dang, that's a good fish. What's he going to weigh? 12 pounds. Funny. God, he did not like me grabbing a hold of him. <laughs> I dropped him on his head. Pretty fish. <laughs> Poor guy, going to have a headache. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.